Imagine the following math problem. A mailman has to distribute the mail in a street that is basically a long line. We assume that there is the same unit distance between each consecutive houses. The mailman leaves his bike at the house number one, distribute the mail at the house number one, and then walk to all the other houses. We assume that he is making one stop and only one stop for each houses, and he finally returned to the house number one when he is done distributing the mail. So, to give an example, if we have n which is equal to 5, a possible path that the mailman could use is the path where he stops at house 1, then at house 5, 3, 2, 4, and then he's coming back to the house number 1. We are going to define m as a path that has been walked by the mailman. And this path can be also written as a finite series that go from m0, m1, etc. up to mn. The mailman has to start with the house number 1, so we will have m0 that is equal to 1, and he has to end at the house number 1, so mn is also equal to 1. And finally, all the number in between will be all the remaining n minus 1 houses. For this problem, we are going also to define the length of a path that is basically the total distance walked by the mailman. We can write this total distance as being equal to the sum from k equal 1 to n of the absolute value of the difference mk minus mk minus 1. And this is because when the mailman is going from the house mk-1 to the house mk, the distance that he's walking is exactly equal to mk minus mk minus 1. Now that the problem is defined, what we would like to know is first, what is the total number of paths that the mailman is able to walk? The second question we would like to answer is related to the path of the minimum length. And the first sub-question is, what is this minimum length? And the second sub-question is how many paths have a minimum length? The third question is related to the maximum length of a path. And in particular, what is this maximum length equal to? And then how many paths have a maximum length? And finally, the last question that we would like to answer is what is the expected value of a length of a path assuming that there is a uniform distribution among all the possible paths. So to answer the first question, let's go back to the way we are writing a path M. So we are writing a path M as being a finite series of the number M0, M1, M2, etc. up to the number Mn. And as we explained before, the number M0 has to be 1. This is where the mailman is starting by leaving his bike. And the mailman will go back to his bike at the house number 1. At the end, there are exactly n minus 1 houses that the mailman has to visit in between. And for the house in M1, the mailman can visit n minus 1 different houses. For M2, the number of possibility of house to visit is decreased to n minus 2, etc., up to mn minus 1, where the number of possibility is equal to 1. So the total number of paths that the mailman can take is equal to n minus 1, n minus 2, etc., multiplied by 1, which is exactly equal to n minus 1 factorial. And another way to think about it is uh, by seeing that the house M1, M2, etc. up to Mn minus 1 must basically be the number 2, 3, etc. n, so basically the number associated to each house, and basically the number of different paths is the number of arrangement of the number 2, 3, etc. up to n. And the number of arrangement of n minus 1 number is exactly equal to n minus 1 factorial. So this is the answer to our first question. The number of possible paths is exactly equal to n minus 1 factorial.
Now the second question is related to the path of minimum length and in particular what is this minimum length equal to? So a quick way to think about it, but not necessarily a rigorous way, is to understand that the mailman has to visit all the houses, including the very last houses, so the house number n, and then has to go back to the house number one. So let's imagine that if the mailman had to visit at least the house number n, it will have to do this entire path from one to n, and then finally go back to the house number one. And there is a distance that is exactly equal to n minus one between the house n and the house number one. And he has to do this same distance a second time. So in that case, we can have this intuitive idea that the minimum length should be equal to two n minus one. Now, by having this quick discussion, we understand that a path has to have a length that is at least equal to 2n minus 1. But to prove that this is a minimum, is there an actual path that can be done at a total distance of 2n minus 1? And there is actually one that we can think about directly, which is the path where the mailman will start in house number 1, go to house number 2, number 3, number 4, etc., up to house number n, and finally go all the way back. Then we know that the distance is plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, n minus one time one, plus the distance to go back that is also n minus one. So we are reaching this minimum value of two n minus one by having this path of one, two, three, etc., n, and finally one. Now, another more rigorous way to uh, find this minimum length is to go back to the definition of uh, the length of a path, which is equal to the sum from i equal 1 to n of the distance between mi and mi minus 1. We know that the mailman has to visit all the houses, so there is an index p such that the mailman is going to visit the house number n in step p. And we can write the total length of the path m as being equal to m1 minus m0 plus m2 minus m1 plus etc. plus mp minus mp minus 1 plus mp plus 1 minus mp plus etc. plus mn minus mn minus 1. And according to the triangle inequality, we know that this sum is greater or equal than m1 minus m0 plus m2 minus m1 plus etc. plus mp minus mp minus 1 plus m p plus 1 minus m p plus etc. plus m n minus m n minus 1. And we can identify a telescoping sum in the first and the second element. So we can see that the m1 here is cancelling with the m1 there. The m2 will be cancelling with the next m2, etc. up to m p minus 1. And the same thing happens for the other item where the mp plus 1 will eliminate with the next mp plus 1, etc. up to the mn minus 1. So at the end, this quantity is equal to m0 minus mp plus mp minus mn. And we know that any path has to start at the house number 1 and has to end at the house number 1, so m0 and mn are equal to 1. And we have chosen mp in such a way that we have mp equal to n. So at the end, this is equal to 2n minus 1. So we just mathematically prove that any path has a length that is greater or equal to 2n minus 1. And we know how to reach such a length by having, for example, a path that is 1, 2, 3, etc., up to n, and finally going back to 1. Now we can answer our next question, which is, what is the number of paths that are minimal? And to answer that question, we need to have a case of equality in the triangle inequality that we have seen right above. 
And in order to have uh, equality, what we need to have is all the mk minus mk minus 1 that needs to have the same sign up to p, where mp is equal to n, and then the same mk minus mk minus 1 that also need to have the same sign from p to n. In other words, the series mi need to be increasing from i equals 0 to p, and then mi need to be decreasing from i equal p to n, where we assume that mp is equal to the house number n. In order to identify all the path of minimum length, the first step is to choose the step p in which we are visiting the house number n. And we know that there are exactly n minus 1 possibility. We can have p equal 1, 2, 3, etc. up to n minus 1. Now that we have selected the step p in which we are visiting the house number n, we have to choose some values for the number m1, m2, etc. up to mp minus 1. And we have to select this value among the possible value 2, 3, etc. n minus 1 that are the possible house that we can visit. And as we said, the series mi has to be increasing uh, from the step 0 up to the step p. So this value m1, m2, etc. up to mp minus 1 have to be in an increasing order. And it turns out that the number of ways to choose p minus 1 numbers among n minus 2 in a specific order is exactly equal to n minus 2 choose p minus 1. So once we have selected this p minus 1 number, we are left with some remaining numbers, but there is exactly one way to arrange the remaining numbers. In the specific order mp plus 1, mp plus 2, etc. up to mn minus 1. So based on all of this, the total number of paths of minimum length is exactly equal to the sum from p equal 1 to n minus 1, so p being the step in which we visit the house number n, of n minus 2 choose p minus 1, which is equal to the sum from q equal 0 to n minus 2 of n minus 2 choose q. So here we just made the change of variable q equal p minus 1. And nothing prevents you to multiply that by the number 1 to the power of q multiplied by 1 to the power of n minus 2 minus q. And what you recognize here is the binomial theorem. And this is equal to 1 plus 1 to the power of n minus 2, which is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 2. So at the end, the number of paths that are minimal is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 2.